magnify your name. Loving God. Loving God. Praise you. We give you 
glory. Hallelujah. Anybody said? Hallelujah. Well, listen. Thank you, Nicole. In a second, in a second, all you uh, YouTube subscribers have always asked me, Pastor Lenny, can we do communion together? So get your communion elements out because in a minute, one of the members of our church is going to come up and she's going to lead us into communion. But I, I know as we were singing that one song, What Can Be Fit for a King? What can I give to a king? You know that God doesn't require anything? He doesn't require anything. He doesn't require that we make ourselves a living sacrifice to him. He doesn't. In fact, in that system where it was all about offerings and sacrifices, he didn't want it. Nor did he take pleasure in it. Do you understand that? And do you think it's changed now that the gospel of grace... Now that we're under the gospel of grace, now that it's all about Jesus, and because it's all about Jesus, it's now be, it's all about us. But listen to what it says in Hebrews. Don't take my word for it. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5. This is beautiful. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wanted not, but you have prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices, right, for sin. Just listen to what this says. Thou hast no, thou hast had no pleasure. He says it. I didn't say it. It says it. So then I said, lo, I come into the volume of the book as it is written to do your will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wanted not, neither hast taken pleasure in them, which are offered under the law, by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God, to take away the first, that he may establish the new. Amen. If anybody preaches you a message that tells you, you have to, you need to, you must, you have an obligation, that is not our gospel. I tried for 37 years to love God under the commands. You must, you have to. You need to love Him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And I failed over and over and over again. But I think religion wanted me to fail over and over again. Because religion had me believing I was just a sinner, saved by grace. That I wasn't perfectly loved by God, that I wasn't approved of by God, and that I wasn't totally righteous with His righteousness. So they wanted me to believe that, that, that lie, those commands. Why? Because they knew I would have to come to the altar again and again and again and again, and make confession, and weep and cry, and leave my offering. Because that keeps religion in business. I can't believe I said that. But under the new covenant, God let me know it was all about how much he loved me. It was all about how much he loved us. Here in his love, not that you love God. What? But that he loved you. And when you go through the many verses of the love God has for us, that with all the saints, we would come to know the many dimensions of His love, the height, the depth, the width, the breadth, the length of His love for us. God knows that as we grow in our revelation of love and righteousness, it, it will simply rebound back to a love for Him that no commandment can command us into. I love Him so much. And I know that as his revelation of how much he loves me grows and how righteous I am continues to grow, I know that love is going to become greater and stronger. And I give God all the glory for that. Amen. So now, uh, we are going to partake. Uh, Frank, can you start handing that out, please? Frank, start handing them out. Yeah. Now. Yeah, now. Start handing out the, the emblems. And um, Caprice... Garino is a member of our church. He's going to lead us into communion. Hopefully you have your emblems by now. 
Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day out today, and I just rejoice in that, too. Thank you, Lord. Thank yes, you. Lord. Hallelujah. Just feel for everybody to get their elements. <laughs> What a blessing to have the music played this morning. Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Blessing. I mean, you're starting Jesus. a whole year with new new beginnings in Thank every one of our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God wants you healed of any condition that affects any part of your body. Amen. Right? Over the past few past few weeks, I've been teaching and giving a glimpse of the absolute perfection of Jesus's work finished on the cross, and how much He loves each of us to have borne every imaginable disease upon his own body, so we need not suffer them. And I want you to encourage you that you need to find promises from the Lord in the scripture and hold on to them. One of the scriptures that I stand on is found in 1 John 4, 17. As he is, so are we in this world. Jesus bore our sins and our diseases in his own body on the cross, and he rose from the grave without them. This means that Jesus is without any disease. And as he is complete, divine health, so are we in this world. He is crowned with glory and honor. So are we in this world. Amen. We overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony. When we hear about others receiving their own miracles, we need to remember it so it sparks faith in us. The Bible is filled with so many healing testimonies. The Holy Spirit recorded story after story of healings, and many of them in great details for our benefit. Thank you, Lord. There is no healing too big or too small for the Lord. The <coughs> testimony of Peter's mother-in-law, who was healed of fever in Matthew 8, 14, and 15. Um, to the man whose hand was withered and became healthy and normal as the other hand in Matthew 12, 9 through 13. To the woman, woman who was bent over for 18 years and could not stand up straight, Luke 13, 11 through 13. They were all recorded for us. There are praise reports of blind eyes being healed in John 9, 1 through 7, Mark 8, 22 through 25, Luke 18, 35 through 43, and Matthew 9, 27 through 30. There are reports of deaf ears being opened, Mark 7, 32 through 35. And the mute speak in Matthew 9, 32, and 33. These are testimonies of those who had died, and there's ones that have died and been brought back to life in John 11, 1 through 44, and Mark 5, 35 through 42. We see all these healings, and he recorded them in detail so we would know that that can happen for us. All right, we see healings in accounts in the Old Testament of Naaman, who was healed of leprosy in 2 Kings 5, 1 through 14. And we see it in Hezekiah, who was terminally ill and was told he would not recover and would die. But God healed him and extended his life by 15 years in 2 Kings 20, 1 through 7. And these are just a few of the many testimonies recorded in the Word of God. We thank you, God, for our hope in the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said on the cross, finish. That means it's been done for us. He didn't give us qualifying statements. He didn't tell us that we have to finish this or accomplish that. He said, finish. Thank for all you, of Lord. those who are watching, if you have never confessed Jesus as Lord of your life and Savior, please take the time now to confess and believe what you believe in your heart, that Jesus is Lord. As it says in Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's that simple. Confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. <clears throat> and you're saved. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Now if this is your first time, please email us at pastormoney at gmail.com. Let us know so we can rejoice in your salvation. And again, welcome you to the family of God. <clears throat> For all of us here, we're born again. Amen? Amen. Amen? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are in right standing. We thank you that we've been given the greatest gift of all, and that we have been washed by the blood of Jesus, cleansed and forgiven. 
and we celebrate your communion. We do this in remembrance of your life, your death, and your resurrection, your finished work. All right? I, as we lift up the bread, please repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus. Thank, you. thank you. You gave your body, you gave your body to be broken, to be broken. So, mine so mine might be whole. By the stripes, that fell on your back, I see my body healed, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, the body of Christ. As we take the cup, please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood that has washed me clean from every sin. Thank you for your righteousness. Thank you for your protection, for your healing, your wholeness, and your provision, the blood of Christ. Thank you very much. Good job. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. A couple quick announcements. If you haven't signed up for um, Friday, July 12th, please do it. Log on to Terrades Ministries and and select July 12th, Friday night. And register because once we hit a hundred we're gonna to have to close it off so we want to make sure that everybody is able to come uh, July 12th Carly and Ashley Terrades will be here but you have to register for the event so it's on their site Terrades Ministries and you'll see their Northeast tour and you will see July 12th okay I can't believe this is going out now. Um, July 12th, Friday night, July 12th, New Life Church, and then you select it and you register, and you're going to have e-tickets. And um, all those that register and have tickets will, will be allowed entry, and um, after that, it will be first come, first serve. We can only fit 100 people, and we're expecting at least that many. It's going to be a great time. Amen. Uh, the other announcement I have, um, for, especially for, for the YouTube subscribers and followers, they keep asking me, you know, Pastor Lenny, will you mentor me? Can you be my pastor? There's not a church in my area, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, from starting in a couple of weeks on uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., for those of you who are interested and let me know, send me your email. I'm going to have live Zoom meetings. Live Zoom meetings where we're going to discuss the Bible, we're going to have Bible study, and then we're going to follow it up with uh, 30 minutes of Q&A. And so I'll be making that announcement again later on this week. But if you're interested, let me know your email, your email account, so we can get you that Zoom link. All right. I'm excited about this word. And I believe Jesus said, well, John said about Jesus in John chapter 8, verse 36. He who the Son makes free is free indeed. He who the Son makes free is free indeed. And so the lane that Pastor Lori and I's ministry is in, involves with seeing God's children free and keeping them free. And that's why we teach the filters that we have, the filters that we teach. I am, I can, and I have. <coughs> I am, I can, and I have. If you read it and it says it differently, it's not correct. If you hear it from the from the pulpits that you're not, or you need to be, or you have to work, or you have an obligation, it's not our gospel. What we need to do is what Paul tells us to do. Therefore, if you've risen with Christ, 
Right? Therefore, if you've been risen with Christ and you're seated with Him at the right hand of God, set your mind there. Set your mind there. Set your mind to the truth of your reality, of where you're positioned, of where you sit, of where you stand. Right? And he tells us in Romans chapter 12, the same thing. Don't, don't be conformed to the image of this, this system, this law legalistic system. It's not world, it's ion, it's age. But become transformed. Become transformed into the newness of life, into your new creation realities. How? By renewing your mind. By thinking right. By thinking right. Ephesians, he says the same thing. You know, that you would know the exceeding greatness of his power that was wrought in you. The same power that was wrought in Christ when he was raised from the dead. And it goes on to say, because of God's rich mercy and because of his rich love. You know, while we were dead in our sins and trespasses, he quickened us together with Christ. <clears throat> and now he seated us with Christ in heavenly places. That's where our mind should be. And he goes on to say, put on your new man, which after Christ has been, it's been created in true holiness and true righteousness. Well, how do we do that, Paul? By being renewed in the spirit of your mind. And so, I believe, and I might, I don't know, I, I believe that it's the job of every new covenant of grace preacher to preach nothing but new creation realities to the people. Amen. To get them living and moving and breathing in the reality of the fact that God made them to be in the exact image and likeness of His Son, Jesus Christ. That they have God's full approval because, because God has glorified them. God glorified them. God glorified them. Romans chapter 8, verse 30. you got to know your word. And that word glory is amazing. Brilliance, majesty, supernatural power, and view and opinion. So when you hear the Father telling Jesus, my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. You hear the Father telling you that. You're my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. If you think negative thoughts about yourself, messed up again, you know, screwed up again, did it again, you are not believing in your love, the love that God has for you, and you're not a hold, uh, withholding or holding on to or believing in or standing in your true righteousness. Period. That's where God wants us to live. But I was up all night. I, 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 laid, I laid in bed up from 10 o'clock at night till 6 o'clock in the morning when I finally you know, decided to get out of bed because I wasn't going to sleep. But it was great because all I did was worship and praise the Lord. All I did was worship and praise Him. That's what He speaks to me. That's when the Holy Spirit speaks to me during worship and praise. And then I started... I started praying. I started praying for my heroes. I have a lot of heroes. You know, Jesus is my hero. He endured the cross for me. He endured the pain. He endured the shame. He endured it all. He endured for me. He's my hero. But I know there's many people that, you know, we're ministering to who are riddled with guilt, shame, and condemnation because they, they don't believe in enough or they don't stand in enough, they don't have enough authority, to, you know, whatever. And so they, they, you know, they just continue to beat themselves over the head. With, it's like with a club, with a stick. And, and uh, guilt, shame, condemnation. And let me tell you something. If you don't come out of the, 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 the gospel message feeling good, feeling giddy, it's not the gospel message. But they're my heroes. And, 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 and I, I, I started praying for them all. You know, started thinking about them all. I, I have so many, so many heroes now. Vera. I, I wish one day I get to meet Vera. We talk on the phone off, off, often. She lives in England, so I'm going to have to make, if I meet her, I'm going to have to go to England. But she's my hero. You know, what she's facing, what she's going through. But she's been seeing victories. She's been seeing victories. And she sent me a, a testimony this morning. She's been seeing victories. I have another couple, they're my heroes, Dan and Alveda. Alveda has a ALS. She's only able to communicate with her eyes. And when he came into my ministry, or upon my ministry, he was riddled with guilt, shame, and condemnation. What am I doing wrong? What am I not doing? And now, he's freed from that. 
And the other day he told me she did something that she's never done. She moved, I forget what part of her body it was, that, that she had never moved. So we, we thank God for those victories. And so I'm speaking to them, and, and I'm praying for them, and I told, I told Dan, I said, you get ready, you're going to be making coffee one day in the kitchen, and, and Elveda's going to get up out of that bed, and she's going to walk into the kitchen, and she's going to tap me on her soldier, shoulder and say, don't forget my cup. You know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and then you're going to, the first thing you're going to do after that, you're going to call Pastor Lenny. Amen. But I believe that. I started praying for them. I, start, I started praying for all my heroes. I started praying for Colette. I started praying for, for Robert. And I started praying for, you know, for Evelyn. And I started praying for Judah and, and, and Rebecca. And I pray for Kristen. Kristen, you've asked me to pray for you, haven't you? You certainly, I certainly have. And you're here. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Jesus is good. So, so many heroes. They're my, you're my heroes. You are my heroes. You're my heroes. And so after I was praying, the Lord gave me a message. A verse of scripture that I'm pretty familiar with. I'll go through this pretty quick. It's only been seven minutes. I'll stop it when it's 25 minutes. Okay. Okay? Okay. That's it. You're done in 25 minutes? Okay, you got it. <laughs> and so this is a this is a portion of scripture that I'm familiar with, but I haven't read it in a long time. I haven't come across it in a long time. But Holy Spirit dropped it into my in, in, in the, from my within my spirit into my soul. And it's taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. <coughs> I know when I say it, many of you are going to know what it is. How many know it before they turn to it? All right. All right, this is what it says in the King James Version. There has no temptation. I like the word situation better. But there has been no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. <clears throat> I like it a little bit better from the Passion Translation. It says this, We all experience times of, of testing, and it's important to understand that those times of testing are not sent to us by God. In life, you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I've overcome. Right? In this world, in this world, in life, in this world, you will have tribula tribulations. But be of good cheer, Jesus said, I've overcome the world. So in life, in this world, it's a fallen world. You know? We're going to experience those times of, of, of testing. Which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. I don't like that. You know, it's like He will be. It's like... See, that's why I don't like translations. I don't like any translations that talk about we're not, or he's not, or he hasn't done. You know what? But God is always faithful to you. He can't, he can't be anything but faithful to you. Maybe I should write the New Testament over. I don't know. <laughs> he will screen and filter the severity, nature, and timing of every trial you face so that you can bear it. And each trial or test is an opportunity for you to trust Him more. For along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously. Now that, that word escape doesn't mean, you know, run away. Like there's a trap door, we can get out. We, that that escape, escape means victory in it. Victory through it. Victory. That's what that word means. I like it. This in another translation. It says, "Your situation is not unique, but every human, but every human life faces contradictions." Here's the good news: God believes in your freedom. He has made it possible for you to triumph in every situation that you will ever encounter. I like that. I like that. So this word is for all my heroes. This, this word is for me. I, I, I want you to know, I let you know uh, last week, I let people know last week, you know, 
that there's certain things that come on my body. They come on my body. And I want you to be, I want to be honest with you. I can't say who, and I can't say how, and I can't say when. But I don't know a person who hasn't had something come upon his body. Not one. Something comes on our bodies. And it still comes on my bodies. And I look at Pastor Lori and I'm amazed. Because it doesn't come on her body. <laughs> you know, and I know my mind has to be fine-tuned. My, 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 my renewal process has to be, you know, we have to, you know, have to work with the Holy Spirit there to bring that renewal process, you know, in, in, into, into correct order with the truth of God's Word. Amen. All right. And that portion of Scripture, I want you to know, you know, I didn't just pull it out, because I know as you read it, it's going to be talking about the nation of Israel. And as you read it, you're going to find things like verse 5, that God is not, was not pleased with them, and they fell into idolatry. Um, and all that meant was they were not responding to God in faith, okay? And they were worshiping and serving the creature, not the creator. Um, but you know what the amazing thing was about that time in the wilderness? Even though they weren't living in faith, or they weren't responding to God in faith, and they were in the wilderness, do you know He always provided for them? That's grace right there. That's mercy. You would think, hey, you're on your own. No, here's manna. Hey, you're on your own. Here's quail. Hey, you're on your own. Here's water. Hey, you're on, here, you're on your own. No, here's a shade from that sun, that hot sun. Here's, here's a cloud. Okay. Oh, you're on your own. No, here's the sunlight at nighttime, the sun, to keep you warm at night. Oh, by the way, you don't have to go to the shoe store. The shoes you have on your feet are never going to wear out. I mean, you know, he took care of them. And this is our God. This is our God. He's not ready to, oh, you disobeyed. Now you got to pay. No. He kept taking care of them. That's grace. You know why? Paul tells us why. Because the covenant that was made with Abraham about the blessings could not be disannulled. Praise God. God had to be true to that covenant. All right? And, um, and so that word escape means an end. An end. A way out. And that word bear is amazing. That we might be able to bear it. All right? And that word means, of course, endure. Endure. It also means to bear from underneath. Also indicating that God himself will be the one that will be bearing us. Like the shepherd, he finds the lost sheep, and he bears it up on his shoulders, yeah. and he carries it. Yeah. Sometimes God will do that. He'll bear us upon his shoulders, and he will be our escape. Amen. But in the meantime, how do we know we can overcome? How do we know we're going to overcome? How do, how do we know we're overcomers? Number one, you know it because you are born of God. Amen. You know it because you're His offspring. Yep. You are born of God and you are His offspring. Hallelujah. I looked at John and, and Nicole. I don't know if Nicole would be so gifted or skilled in music if she didn't have a gifted and skilled father who was a musician. But because her father was gifted and skilled in, 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 in musical instruments... You know, and I, and I was impressed because I've never heard a banjo before, and a banjo was pretty cool. Yeah. Right? Now, now, she's gifted. And so here's God, okay? Wow. How do I know that we could overcome? Because we're born of God. We're born of God. We're His offspring. Jesus was His offspring. Jesus was an overcomer. Jesus was victorious. We're just like Jesus. We overcome. We're victorious. Number one, we're born of God. We're His offspring. And here it is, John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. I'm reading it from the Amplified because it amplifies what the Greek tells us about this verse and what most of the other uh, versions leave out. <clears throat> and it says, But as to many as did receive and welcome Him, He gave the authority, He gave the power, He gave the privilege... He gave the ability. He gave the right. Wow, that's a lot of giving. To become 
his very own children. You know, what you got to do is read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, where it says, Jesus is the expressed image of the Father, his mirror image. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But now Paul tells us that we are the expressed image of Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. So when you put Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 29 with Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, Jesus is the express image of the Father, right? His mirror image, the express glory of the Father, right? And we're the express image and likeness of uh, Jesus. That means we're the very expressed image and likeness of God the Father himself. We're his offspring. We're his offspring. Who believe in and hear and adhere to and trust in <coughs> and rely on his name. Who owe their birth. See, I don't owe my birth to neither to bloods nor the will of the flesh, that of the physical impulses, nor to the will of man, that of na a natural father, but to God. They are born of God. So for all my friends out there who keep asking me about generational curses, when you become born of God, they're gone. Done away with. No longer exist. If I'm cursed now, you know what I'm cursed with? Blessings. <laughs> Prosperity. Everything yes and amen. amen. Born of God. And uh, born of God were his offspring. And it tells us in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, For it's in him we live and we move and we have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For we are his offspring. We're his offspring. You think you would ever hear Jesus say, I can't do it? Do you ever think you'd hear Jesus say, I can't do it? Can't do it. You ever think you'd hear Jesus say, I don't have enough? Nope. You ever think you'd hear Jesus say, Well, my body is. It's kind of lacking in healing or wholeness. No. But we're just like him. We're his offspring. All right? That's number one. You need to know you're born of God. You're his offspring. It's going to get you through. And then you have to know this. It's not you doing the living. You have to remove you from, from the situation. I remember when I was going through my, my cancer treatments, and I would get to the radiation center, okay? I would, before I stepped on there, I said, Lord, you know, I know I'm healed. What do you want me to do? And he said, proceed with peace. I said, okay, I'll follow you. And he took me there, and I fell asleep on that table. I fell asleep on that table. I was at such peace. Because Jesus was, Jesus was doing it. Jesus was taking it. I was in him. I was living in him. I was moving with him. One day, the power went out, and I was stuck in, I was stuck in an array situation for an hour and 45 minutes. They kept, they kept waking me up and bothering me. <laughs> Mr. Roller, we apologize. We're sorry. I said, will you leave me alone? I'm taking a nap. I haven't slept in a long time, you know? I'm, I'm sleeping, you know, because months before that, I just didn't sleep. And now I was catching up in all my sleep. And when I got down, they said, Mr. Roller, we have not ever met anybody like you. And I said, I bet you tell that to anybody. Said, no. <laughs> We've never met anybody like you. You know, and I used to go from room to room, and all the people were there. They were crying. They were scared, and, and I was praying for them and ministering to them and putting smiles on their on their faces and, you know, telling them how, you know, through God, you're, 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 you're an overcomer. You're going to make it through. You're healed. You're whole. And breathing life into there was just, it was just, it was God. But it, was, it wasn't me. See, that's just it. It wasn't me. I can't take any credit for it. It wasn't me. It was Jesus. It's not you doing the living. It's Him doing it. Alright? I am crucified with Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But yet not, not, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. That is so powerful, and people don't understand how powerful that is. And they try to change the words. Some of your translations might say, 
and the life I now live, I live by the faith by faith in the Son of God? No. No. King James Version got it right when they translated it of. Of. Paul said, I now live my life by the faith of the Son of God. What was the faith of the Son of God? That he knew he would become God's sacrifice, God's offering. He knew he would take the stripes. He would take the whipping. He knew he would take the pummeling. He knew he would take the nails. He knew he would take the, 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 the spikes in his feet. He knew he would become naked, naked, he without anything. He knew that he would be betrayed because he was God's offering, God's sacrifice. And God took pleasure in that. Why? Because he knew it was pleasing God, and the reason why it was pleasing God, that through that, through his death, burial, and that resurrection, we can be raised in newness of life with him, and now God can have a family of Jesus's. Family of Jesus. How many Jesuses we have in here? Lots of Jesuses here. My old identity has been crucified, co-crucified with the Messiah. And it's no longer, and no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. Wow. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. Paul's Gospel. You know, you read where Paul says that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. What came first, the fellowship of his sufferings or the power of his resurrection? The suffering. Fellowship of his suffer sufferings came first. Okay? And so because translations, you know, have it one way, you know, versus another, you know, Paul, that I might know him, you know. Paul is always talking about preaching the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel, you know, it's God's power for all who believe for salvation. And what's Paul's gospel? Jesus died. Jesus well, Jesus was crucified. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose from the dead. That's it. That's all he preached. And when he's saying that I might know him, right? That I might what he's saying is that I might know that union more fully. That I might know that union more fully. Right? Right? I was crucified with him. I was crucified with him. Right? I died. I was crucified with him. I died. It was my sin. It was me. We were, we were united. We were one. Number two. No, and then number three. I was buried with him. Old man, old nature, buried with him. Sin, sickness, disease, buried with him. And then number four. I was raised with him in the newness of life. This is all Paul is telling. This is all Paul is preaching. See Jesus. Crucified. Died. Buried. Resurrected. See yourself. Crucified, died, buried, resurrected. Paul's gospel. That's his, that's his gospel. So now let this be your new way to live. And this is how you're going to endure, right? And escape. And live in victory. Three. You're going to now use your senses to become your servants. You're not going to allow your senses to be your masters. Use your senses to become your servants. What do I mean? The only things that Paul tells us. Number one, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Use your eyes. Use your sight. Use the senses of seeing. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Because he's the author and completer and finisher of faith. Amen. Use your senses to become your servants. Stop allowing them to become your master. Stop looking at the situation. Stop looking at circumstances. Stop looking at the lack. And start looking at Jesus. Use your eyes to look at Jesus. To see Jesus. To see Him. And as you look upon Him, use your eyes to see Him. 
your faith will become completed. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Use your ears, your sense, your, the sense of hearing, make it your servant and not your slave. I mean, and, and not make your senses your masters. But make your senses, your sense of hearing to become your servant and keep hearing about the Christ. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Continue your hearing. Continue your hearing about the anointed Christ. Keep hearing. Dead. Buried. Raised from the dead. You. Die. Were buried. And raised from the dead with him. Use your ears. Use that sense. To keep hearing messages about the anointed one. About Christ. Because when you do. Faith just comes. Faith just comes. You see faith comes. You see, faith is perfected. Use your eyes. Use your ears. Faith just, faith just comes. Faith just perfected. You don't have to muster it up. You don't have to see that you, you, know, you have it created. You don't have to convince yourself you have faith. You will know. Because it will be a fruit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Touch. Use the sense of touch. Make it your servant. Stop making it your master. And feel, I used to lay in bed. I used to lay in bed and I took my arms and I would picture Jesus being the one hugging me. And I used to say, thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you. That you love me so much. There's nothing I could do to make you love me any less. And there's nothing I'll ever do to make you love me. You know, nothing I do to make you love me any less. Nothing I need to do to make you love me any more. You love me. Thank you. You love me. You love me perfectly. You love me completely. I use my sense of touch. I make it my master. Sure. What? Yeah, make it my servant. There you go. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and then Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Taste. Taste. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste the great victory He's provided for you. We're, we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. Taste that victory. Taste it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I use my senses to become my servants and I don't allow them to be masters over my life. Your escape, your victory, your enduring comes from being fixed on Him, never from being fixed on yourself. Your escape and your victory, your enduring will come from being fixed on Him and not being fixed on yourself. No work, no effort, no doing. Use your eyes to see Jesus. Use your ears to hear about Him. Use your sense of touch to feel His loving arms around you. And taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And you will see. You will see your victory. And I want you to believe I want you to believe. Get rid of this thinking and get rid of this mentality. You know, the calendar and the clock. Stop making it your, I forget, I forgot how they, do any of you remember how they said that? You know, stop looking at the clock and the, and the, uh, and the calendar. Don't worry about how long it's going to take. No, stop it. We're not talking about a length, long length of time. We're talking about you're going to go to bed tonight and you're going to wake up healed and whole. Yes. My God is suddenly, my God is right now. And it's not by your works of righteousness, but it's by His compassion and His mercy and His love. We believe in Him right now. Amen. We believe in Him right now. And when you go to bed at night, you believe in the morning you're going to wake up and your feet are going to hit the floor and you're going to be a new person. You're going to be a new man. You're going to be a new woman. Alveda, you believe you're going to wake up. You're going to get out of that bed. You're going to scare Dan. <laughs> He's not going to be expecting it, but he should be expecting it. And on and on and on. Vera, 
You're going to get rid of that wheelchair. You're going to sleep at night. You're going to sleep every night. It must, it must be. Because the Bible says He has pre prepared for you the way out of your situation. Amen. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for all you have done because it's all your work. Yes, sir. And we just rest in it and we believe it. We rest in it, we believe it, we receive it. We thank you for your great love for us. And we thank you that you have declared us righteous. And that means we are fully qualified for every single blessing because of faith in Jesus Christ. And we praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Amen. And now we have Nicole to, to give us a parting song. Jesus. sing and dance with Grandpa at the end. Aww, that's so cool. Yeah, I used to love that. I got videos of them doing that. Um, that's so good. All right, well, let's just worship. Yeah, one last song. One last song. Ah, Jesus. Sing the best choice.